Uh, John Brennan is with us, of course, the former CIA director who these days is a senior national security and intelligence analyst around these parts. Uh, he has not been, uh, he, this is his first reaction to the Mueller report today. And Director Brennan, uh, your take on it. Hi, Brian. Well, like many others, I'm waiting my way through the report. But I do have a number of reactions to the report and events this morning. First, I'm very pleased at the amount of the report that was not redacted, that has seen the light of day. I think it demonstrates that the Department of Justice professionals and those within the special counsel's team really fulfilled their professional responsibilities ably. Second, the extent of the, of the redactions um, that are related to ongoing investigations and potential prosecutions. I think it shows that although the Mueller team has concluded its work, there is still a lot of related activity going on that may very well lead to further criminal charges of individuals who were involved in criminal activity. Third, um, the amount of uh, information that relates to collusion and obstruction activity is really quite extensive in this report. I think by anyone's account, you can identify all the things that were going on between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and interactions and meetings with Russians. Uh, it, it was quite, uh, quite um, I think, um, enlightening from the standpoint of uh, the things that we've seen in press reports or borne out here by the special counsel's report. Uh, fourth, the, the extent and nature of what I would say is the very egregious conduct of Donald Trump that's included in the report, uh, especially on the obstruction side. Uh, this conduct was unethical, unprincipled, dishonest, and I would say it really does smack of political corruption in terms of trying to get people to mislead and to not tell the truth for a very legitimate ongoing uh, law enforcement investigation. And also, it is, I think, should be troubling to all of us that Bob Mueller could not determine that these actions by a sitting president were legal. He could not make that determination. Uh, and that's why I think it is critically important that this report be looked at very, very carefully, not just by the American people, but also by the members of Congress of both parties and looking at it in a rather nonpartisan way. And finally, I quite frankly was shocked at the performance of Attorney General Barr this morning. Like many others, I had very high hopes that Attorney General Barr would really rise to the occasion when he was confirmed and fulfill the responsibilities of an Attorney General to act as this country's chief law enforcement officer and do it in a manner that was not going to take into account the, uh, the politics of uh, the person who uh, nominated and appointed him. But I think his, the political nature of his comments this morning were blatant, um, politically gratuitous. Uh, he cast this as uh, an, almost an exoneration of Donald Trump. He didn't talk at all about the things that happened that we all should be concerned about as Americans. Uh, I think he really did give a pass uh, to this administration, to, uh, to Donald Trump, in a manner that I think was uh, unbefitting of somebody who holds that very, very important office of the Attorney General. And I'm, I think like many others, I'm just disappointed that uh, Attorney General Barr decided to go down this path. Director Brennan, it's Nicole. I wondered, I read a section about um, the president's efforts to get his top national security officials, DNI, Coates, um, uh, Admiral Rogers, who was then the head of the NSA, um, Comey for a while, to go on the record and, if, and essentially function as rapid responders in the news cycle, in the, in, the, in the national newspapers, putting out there that he was not under investigation and to use his top intel chiefs as arms of his political and press operation. How we have so many conversations about whether the guardrails have held. Um, how did you read that section and what do you think it portends for his ongoing expectations of his current national security team? Well, um, I am very, very uh, pleased that uh, Dan Coates and Mike Rogers uh, would not accede to the request of uh, Mr. Trump or their demands and really push back, just like Don McGahn did as well. I think it shows that Donald Trump is um, will use whatever opportunity exists to get people 
to um, protect him, to lie for him, to misrepresent the facts and the truth. And uh, we need to have those guardrails. And that's why people like, uh, you know, John Kelly is no longer there. Um, and you can say what you will about some of the things that maybe John Kelly did or said, but he was somebody who I think really honored the law, the rule of law, the importance of that, and not protecting anybody. Nobody is above the law. Uh, and so I think this just gives a, a additional, um, you know, basis for the concerns that Donald Trump is going to abuse the presidential authorities uh, that he, he holds. Director, do you see any indication in here that your testimony in early 2017 that Donald Trump wittingly or unwittingly was, was prescient, that, that, it, that it looks like Robert Mueller didn't have the evidence to recommend prosecuting a criminal chargeable conspiracy, but he certainly leaves the door open, even in the redacted version we can all see, that perhaps unwittingly that is precisely what happened. Well, I think this should lay uh, waste to the claims that this investigation was uh, trumped up, it was a hoax, um, that there is so much uh, information here that really did raise the concerns of the, of the FBI, of Jim Comey, of myself during that 2016 period, that there was every reason to go forward with a very substantially predicated investigation, and that it was uh, incumbent upon those institutions of government to pull those threads to find out what the Russians were doing. It also, this also makes clear that the Russians were working not just to interfere in the election, but also to try to advance the uh, prospects of Donald Trump getting elected. And this is something that a, a lot of Republicans on the Hill um, disagreed with. I remember when I was testifying to them, they really took great umbrage at the fact that, you know, the Russians were helping the Republican candidate to get elected. But it says it very clearly in this report. That's what they were doing in terms of the social media outreach and trying to ensure that they did whatever possible to enhance Donald Trump's prospects for election, which you know, may in fact have been uh, a dispositive element in the ultimate outcome. Former CIA Director John Brennan, thank you very much for sharing your reactions to the Mueller report uh, with us. We appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.